So what I have here in front of me is a member of the nightshade family. And this is called European bittersweet. This is a local uh, poisonous plant. This is not the black deadly nightshade most people uh, are aware of. This is European bittersweet which is a close relative to the black nightshade. They're basically uh, brothers almost. But um, the difference is, is uh, this plant, once the uh, berries become ripe, they turn uh, bright orange to a red color, almost like a very small cherry tomato, as opposed to the uh, dark purple to black color of the black nightshade. So some identifying features of the bittersweet nightshade is uh, upon observation, it's easy to identify because uh, the leaves can be dark green to purple. The flowers are usually star-shaped, blue to violet, and in the center they have a prominent yellow cone. The flowers grow in uh, clusters along the branches and eventually later on in the season become berries which are egg-shaped to round. The unripe berries are green, then orange and ripen to red. The crushed leaves and bark, um, I find, have a, an unpleasant smell. This plant can usually be seen or found in uh, most states or provinces across Canada and the United States. Here's a couple of ripe berries here. They're just in the process of starting to ripen here now. These leaves have a very distinctive leaf, like nothing I've ever really seen to compare to. They have a big bulbous center leaf. And you can see as they uh, curve very steeply inward toward the center bract and then back outward to two uh, kind of uh, mirrored arranged leaves. This is actually all one leaf, but it's just the shape of it. it makes it very distinguishable. The underside is uh, very dull and uh, more of a whiter color as opposed to the top, which is uh, much greener. It takes a vine formation from a woody uh, stem and it can grow uh, quite long and it uh, usually crawls up and uh, chokes out a kind of a host plant. So the identification of the vine, these are uh, leaves that are alternately divided, which means they step up like uh, one, two, and three, and four, and uh, five like a ladder. That's what alternating is, and this is how these leaves grow. So they're identified by the leaf arrangement that way. If they were opposing, they'd be growing right across from each other. So uh, the arrangement of uh, the leaves is a very uh, key factor. So the berries typically grow off the side of the stem toward the end of the plant in a very clustered, uh, erratic fashion. They look very closely to uh, pea-sized cherry tomatoes. I'm fortunate enough to be early enough in the season that uh, I have access to the flower of this plant. The flowers of the European bittersweet are uh, violet, anywhere from a light to a dark violet with a uh, yellow cone shape in the center. And the uh, black nightshade has a white flower. So even with no berries, this can be distinguished from uh, deadly black nightshade by its purple flowers. So this European bittersweet here contains some uh, pretty toxic alkaloids that cause uh, vomiting, dizziness, weakened heart, liver damage, convulsions, uh, paralysis, and eventually death if consumed uh, enough. The berries, uh, when they're starting to grow, they're uh, a green color, and this is when they contain most of the alkaloid. As they ripen and mature to their orange color, they uh, eventually lose a lot of this alkaloid. And according to many of my sources, they're actually uh, somewhat edible at this stage in very small quantities. However, uh, I make a habit of staying away from anything that can be uh, potentially this toxic any time of year. One of the things you have to understand about this plant, or the uh, black nightshade, is when the, why the berries mature and they become edible is because the toxic alkaloid leaves the berries and uh, heads to another part of the plant. So this plant is uh, responsible for many poisonings and deaths of uh, many different kind of livestock, including sheep, cattle, and uh, pigs. My sources indicate that uh, stem extracts of the European bittersweet have been uh, taken internally as a sedative or a pain reliever. 
and for treating asthma, gout, or rheumatism, severe coughs and bronchitis. But uh, there's never really been any solid evidence that this has been uh, valid or worked. Some recent research has shown that the uh, European bittersweet contains a tumor inhibiting compound, which means that uh, it could be useful for treating cancer. And uh, one of the things that you have to understand about what we deem as poisonous or toxic plants is that the uh, anything in nature potentially has a use. It's just that he, as human beings, uh, this uh, toxin or poison is a medicinal has a medicinal purpose to it. It's just in such a high concentration, or it's so powerful that as is or improperly prepared, it could potentially be lethal to us. So what we deem as poison could also potentially be medicinal if used properly. So to everybody who's seen these before, always wondered what these were. This is not a fungus. This is in fact a parasitic plant. It's called parasitic Indian pipe. It's not a member of the mushroom kingdom. It is, however, the only plant that contains no chlorophyll. It contains zero chlorophyll and it cannot feed itself. So that being said, this plant's capable of living in very dark places with next to no sunlight. What this does is it feeds off certain types of fungus which feed off certain types of trees. So indirectly, in a way, I guess you could say this plant feeds off trees. It can often be found next to cedars, spruce. These ones here are actually growing right under a poplar tree. And I'm assuming it's feeding off the fungus as rhizomes or roots under the ground because I don't exactly see any uh, mushrooms growing in the area of this. So there must be some kind of a fungus around the area that I just can't see. Anyways, it gets quite deep in the earth. They got pretty long roots. Uh. So yeah, this one's been in the ground several inches. Uh, right there, it cur curved off, so probably goes down quite a bit farther. Usually though, these plants are found uh, knotted over like that. It's not too often you see them sticking straight up out of the ground like that. This is the head of this plant here. It almost has very small pitiful looking petals on it. Sometimes there's a yellowish uh, cone in the core of them. These ones are pretty much completely white with a little bit of a pinkish tinge. This plant has been used in the past as a wild edible. It does contain some potentially toxic uh, compounds in it. So it's suggested to uh, boil this probably in at least two changes of water if you plan on using it. But due to its rarity and scarceness, I don't see it very often and I walk through the bush a lot. I'd recommend just leaving it alone. It's said to have a taste and texture much like asparagus. I would imagine after the two changes of water though, it's probably pretty bland tasting, especially since it has no chloroplasts. Parasitic Indian pipes actually uh, classified as a perennial herb. Usually grows eh, about 10 to 20 centimeters tall. It's got a fleshy waxy white and rarely pinkish tinge to it, usually in clusters of unbranched stems. The flower heads have scale-like uh, linear to oval alternating leaves, usually about a centimeter long. This plant usually blooms in the fall time out of its flower head. It has a lot of seeds in there. I've always found this plant in a dense moist forest. It's usually in a low uh, elevation. It can usually be found in all provinces.